It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. My guest, tight end Brevin Jordan. Uh, welcome to the NFL. You caught your first touchdown on Sunday. Congrats. Um, how has the season been for you so far? It's been good. It's been a learning curve. You know, I'm I'm under guys like Jordan Akins and Anthony Alclair and Farrell Brown, even guys like Quiz, man. I mean, the room I'm in, they're, they're leaders. They're true pros. So being able to learn under those guys, I mean, Akins is 29. I'm only 21 years old. So to get a different – a more grown aspect on how to be a pro has, has been really helpful. I love that you said you almost threw up after you scored <laughs> the first touchdown. Yeah. You didn't, though. I didn't. Which, I kept it strong. Oh, that's great. That's, yeah. That would have been interesting. Very. Um, any other big moments in your life that have induced that sort of uh, reaction from you? Have you ever yeah, felt that actually, way before? Yeah. So the first game my sophomore season in college against Florida. So I scored, and they we brought out the touchdown rings. That was the first year we brought out the touchdown rings. and I stood up and legit had the same feeling, but I – Kept it strong. <laughs> Kept the player. Had to keep it moving. That's pretty good. Yes, I ma'am. think, um, yeah, you don't want that on the highlight reel. Not at all. All right, so you were inactive for the first seven games, and then you got to, to start in, in week eight. So, you know, what is that like when you're preparing for the game all the way up to Sunday? You don't get to play. I mean, but how much does that help you in your preparation, your pregame rituals, just getting ready to actually play? How much did that really set you up for when you actually did go out there and play? Oh, it helped me a lot. It, it, it had me ready to go at all times. I mean – Going into the week every week since I since I started playing last week, I've take, taken the approach that I'm playing. So every week I'm preparing and I'm I'm studying the notes and the game plan as much as I, as if I'm playing. So being being in the locker room before the game, not suiting up, and I'm seeing how guys are moving. I'm seeing Brandon Cooks constantly doing band work and and Farrell's jump roping and just all these guys just have different rituals. And so I was just slowly picking it all up, but then. You know, when it was game time, I was ready to go. Did you pick up a ritual for yourself? Did you have one when you were at Miami? I did. So I got in the hot tub before the game, and I was just in there for like 20 minutes. I was starting to sweat, and I didn't want to go out there dehydrated, so I went and got an IV too, but get in the hot tub. Somebody else said they get in the hot tub. Chris Moore said he did that, and I thought that would be relaxing, but I think it's it's just to get your muscles warmed up and loose. Right. Maybe. I'm not sure. I saw a lot of other guys do it, so I kind of just <laughs> like, did I'm going to do that, too. Yeah. Are you going to start jump roping or maybe no. see what? No, yeah, no, that's no, not going to Brown lost me with that one. I don't know what he's doing with that one. <laughs> he's getting his steps in. Yeah. Uh, David Cauley said that you were a steal when the Texans drafted you in the fifth round, but a lot of people thought you would get drafted sooner. What was what was that like for you, just getting drafted? I mean, did you feel like you should have gone sooner? Did Woo. you have a chip on your shoulder? What was what was that whole experience like for the you? The draft process for me was very scary, to be honest with you. I was – I was – it was a – it was not a fun – I mean, the the process going into it was fun, but draft day was very – it was just a lot of anxiety. Like, I didn't know how to feel, how to – it was just weird. I mean, once the Houston Texans called me and Casario was on the phone and Cully was on the phone, it, it, everything just went away. I was just like, I'm a Houston Texan. I'm going to show everybody what's up. Did you want to throw up then? No, <laughs> I didn't. I, as soon as they called me, I started crying. I just burst out into tears. Oh, that's yeah, nice. It was very, it was unbelievable. So you weren't disappointed that it was the fifth round. Like you not weren't. At all. You had no expectations. Yeah, not at all. You were a three-year starter at Miami. You said you worked your way into the lineup as a freshman, so you got to start games. You you chose Miami over a number of different schools. Right. Um, I saw that you chose Miami over Florida, Florida State, Georgia. What made you want to choose Miami over some of the other schools? So it was honestly, I had a very e- like easy recruiting process. So my top three schools was Miami, Michigan, and UCLA. So I visited UCLA, and it was just too much like home to me. It was, you know, I'm from Las Vegas, so it's a 30-minute flight, 45-minute oh, flight. Oh, okay. So it was just too much like home. And then Michigan, it was just, I'm lost from Las Vegas, so it was cold out there. Like, it's too I different. Wear, too <laughs> different. I had to wear snow boots and a snow jacket yes, when I went out there. Yes. And then I went to Miami, and, you know, at the time they were number two in the country. They were very big on the tight end tradition, and at the time they were they were ten and zero. So I was just like, "Oh, this is awesome!" And the beach and the palm trees. It was just well, beautiful. yeah, that's that's going to be a nice sell. Well, right. Did you ever consider going to school in Texas? No, not no. at all. No, I, I mean I'm not a country guy. I'm like from Las Vegas. You're I'm from like, the city. I'm from a huge city, so I was I was like, I need to go. I mean, Houston's city. pretty big. Are, were you surprised that you are to now living you, in Houston? <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you, I thought when I first got drafted to Houston, I thought it was like a lot of like cows and you know farms and stuff but then when i came out here and i heard it's like top three most diverse cities in america and just the food out there out here is beautiful i love yeah it. yeah it's, yeah people but, people when houston wins people over really oh really quick quickly. it won me over very quick, really quick very quick you, you said you wanted to go to miami because it was tight in you but you're really good as a pass catcher so why did you not ever play wide receiver why are you a tight end um i give a lot of thanks to that to my freshman football coach rob bergman uh he moved me to tight end so i actually wanted as a to play, in high school yes in okay. high school as a freshman i wanted to play receiver but at the time i was you know i was a 6'3 200 pound kid i was 
his freshman football I was bigger wait and as a freshman you were 200 yeah, pounds yeah oh, i was okay. a big little kid but i mean <laughs> i was kid. just bigger than everybody so he just moved me to tight end and i stuck with it and i actually really fell in love with the position okay so you never had the desire to just be a receiver nah, and just catch no nah. all right you, you mentioned high school you went to high school in nevada bishop gorman uh which is like a powerhouse when right. it comes to football right. i think you were part of the ninth straight state Sometimes. title honestly i couldn't even tell you Okay. Like that. What was that like going to a high school that was just? I mean, did you guys have scouts out there every single week oh, watching every, your game? Oh, we had scouts out there every day, almost. I mean, we, the reason we were so good in high school, like obviously we have the nice facilities and you know we're we're considered a powerhouse, but I think it was the camaraderie that the guys in that locker room have. I'm still best friends with a lot of those guys. I mean, Tay Martell, Bubba Bolden, Biagio Ali Walsh. I'm friends with all of those guys. So it was, it was really how close we are, how close we were as friends. And then I learned. From what I learned in high school, I took it to college with me and just about, you know, being close. Because when you hang out off the field, it, the connection is so much tighter on the field. All right. And there were some famous alumni that went there as well. I looked it up because I was like, this high school sounds right. so familiar. DeMarco Murray. Yep. Ronnie Stanley. Have yep. you ever met any famous alumni that went to your high school? Have you ever I mean, been in touch you, with them? Would you consider Cordell Broadus famous? Sure. Snoop sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cordell. I mean, who else? That's real. I can't even think of nobody. Gorman is a powerhouse, though. So I mean, a lot of people who are considered, I guess, famous, like. But they've gone. Much... They've gone on to have professional careers, right, right. so they may not be like right. a Demarco Murray, but right. yeah, they've got names in the NFL and they've right. had careers in the NFL. All right, your dad was drafted by the Falcons, and yes, I know you talked about this after uh, the Texans drafted you as well. Um, ninth round of the 1990 draft, yep. but he never played because right. he he suffered a shoulder injury in yeah. in, in training camp yeah. or preseason. Yeah. That's Pops, man. Shout out my Pops. He actually, he passed away my senior year of high school. You know, shout out my dog, Daryl Jordan. You already know. But, um, yeah, man, he was, he, that's where I think we got the love of football from. Because, I mean, yeah. he had a, he has a huge book, like a collection of, like, old newspaper stuff from when he got drafted and, you know, setting records in high school. So, I mean, we got, me and my two brothers, we got a hold of that book and it was over with. We were like, we're playing football. What position did your dad play? He played linebacker and tight end, actually. But he, he mainly linebacker. Linebacker and tight end? Yes, ma'am. I read somewhere that when you were five, your mom put you in football, and she wanted them to play you on defense. <laughs> that Was that because of your that's dad? Actually, that's, I, I, no, I don't think it was because of my dad. I think it was because I was only five years old, and I was playing up with my older brother. He was eight. So I was just looking like a little little child out there. Like I was just smaller <laughs> than everybody. So th my mom was like, don't put the ball in his hands. or I'm gonna him off <laughs> He's going to get drilled. Yeah, Beverly Jordan does not play about the stuff like that. Okay, so um, you, you mentioned being only 21 years old. You are officially the youngest player on this roster. Wow. I don't know if you know that. Wow. July 16, 2000, Danny Amendola is the oldest. He's 15 years older than you. <laughs> um, I've been watching Danny Amendola since I was like <laughs> nine years old. I did, told him that first did day. Did you tell him that? Building. First day I met him, I told him, I was like, bro, I've been watching you since I was like nine years old. Did he take that as a compliment? He or was, was like, he... bro, don't make me feel old. Yeah. Everybody says the same thing. I told David Johnson and Brandon Cooks the same thing. <laughs> You've been watching that. Well, I mean, you probably could have watched both of these kids, like right. most, most of these players when you were a kid because Literally, like, you are so young. Nine, 10, 11 years old. I was watching all these guys. Okay, so... You were the youngest player. Is there another player in the locker room that you think is really, like, the youngest at heart? Like, let's take age out of it. I would honestly say Farrell Brown and Jordan Akins, truthfully. I mean, it's not even – I'm not even trying to be, like – I could see – I mean, uh, Jordan's kind of quiet. I could see Farrell. Right. Jordan's he's, quiet, but he's not quiet with – With the tight with, ends? He's He is a goofball. The okay. dude is a – Hilar he's hilarious and same with Farrell. Farrell's personality is so big like I think yeah. Farrell's 27 28 years old yeah the dude is really like 17 years old <laughs> he loves to mess with me always doing something to me I'm like all right dude but okay well, on the flip side who's got the old soul who's like the old grandpa in the locker room um old soul in the locker room Davis Mills probably the, yeah oh, okay I got Davis Davis is just like I don't know I always tell Davis like do you get mad? Like, I ask, like, <laughs> are you, like, he just, he's always so cool, so calm. Like, when he makes a mistake about anything, you know, he just, he looks at what the mistake was and he just keeps it pushing. Davis is just so relaxed, though. He doesn't let anything, you know, make him fold under pressure. Okay, I like that. All right, so I have been told that since you were born in 2000, you're not going to know what these pictures are. I think that you're going to know them. <laughs> All right, let me see them. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you these pictures. All right. Seriously? Is that a uh, is that what is uh, that's the um the little game the little ah hold on I know what it is it's the I'm, case isn't that a case for like one of the little games? <laughs> it's a floppy disk. Uh, these are floppy disks. You don't know what these are? No, I sadly oh don't. My gosh. Okay, okay, hang on. What is this? That's a tape recorder. 
Oh, <laughs> is it my wrong? It's a pager. What? It's a pager. Yeah. Do you know what a pager is? Before people carried cell phones, they would have to send you your their number, and then you'd get to a payphone and call them back. Yeah, that's not my business. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah. I, man, I, I gave you a lot of credit. All right, who are these guys? Wait. Wait, I was going to say the Backstreet Boys, but Justin Timberlake wasn't in the Backstreet no, Boys. No, he wasn't. No, that's good. That's good that you know that. Well, I know the name. Okay. It's, um, I feel like you know this one. Wait, can you tell me the first N- letter? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> In Too Deep? No? In Sync. No? In, In Sync. In you knew that. You know, if you knew Backstreet Boys, I feel like you would have known that one. All right, one more. You talk to me. <laughs> I feel like this kind of gives it away. It's written on here. Is that a? Is that like a... What, what, what? Oh, you don't know. I have no clue. Okay, what it is. so it a- looks like an Albertsons commercial or uh, something. Oh, is that Albertsons? AOL, America Online. That's how people used to get on the internet with dial-up. Your phone, your computer would dial uh-huh. this number, and this is how we got on the internet. It was the AOL login screen. Look, it says it's the little guy running, the little cartoon guy, and he says you're connected. Yeah, all I know is Google. Yeah. And Safari. Yeah, I don't know nothing about none of that. Oh my! Well, I'm glad we played this with you. You really are young. I think that just really proves how young you are. I, f- I thought I these were not. obvious that you would know all these. Oh. Okay. All right. I need to be better. I need to do better. All man. right, Brevin Jordan. That's all right. I mean, don't apologize for being young. All right. What's it going to be like for you come this weekend when you get to go back to Miami and play as a rookie in the oh, I'm NFL? Excited. How I'm cool excited. is that going to be to be in the same stadium that you played in? I'm in very college? excited. I'm going to go, you know, to Hard Rock Stadium. I'm going to just take a deep breath and I'm going to look in the sky. And I'm just going to remind myself, you know, how grateful I am because my University of Miami is where it started for me. It's where, you know, I learned how to, you know, control my emotions on the field. It's where I learned how to, you know, be a pro, treat myself better, just everything. So I'm, I'm just going to go up there and just be grateful, just thankful for the opportunity. Well, we are grateful to have you and looking forward to seeing another touchdown. And you know what? I feel like you'll have the nerves behind you. You won't even want to throw up the second. Oh, yeah. Definitely Maybe it'll be not. less. I'll be ready. No, Maybe I'll be, be ready. Less. This time around, I'll be ready. <laughs> and you know deal. what? You don't need AOL anywhere, so you're Absolutely. already you're already winning. All right, Brevin Jordan, thanks so much for the time. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching, and go Texans! Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new content.